Hello, everybody. Welcome. So we are continuing our uh, moving load and influence lines. Another example problem. So this problem is a simply supported beam with a span of 18 meter and again a train of loads. So the loads given are 80 kilo Newton, 60 kilo Newton, 80 kilo Newton and 100 kilo Newton. And the distances between the loads are between the first two loads 2 meter, between the second and third load 2 meter, between the third and the fourth load 3 meter. And we are asked to find absolute maximum shear and absolute maximum moment. This is the difference of this problem from the previous problems. See previous problems we saw how to determine the maximum shear forces and bending moment at a section. At a section. Here section is not given. We are asked to find the maximum absolute shear force, absolute maximum shear force and absolute maximum moment. So we will go on to the problem. So this is our given problem. Okay, while studying the concept, we saw how to draw the influence line diagram for the absolute maximum shear force. Suppose if you are taking our section here, if you are taking our section x at this part, our influence line diagram for the shear force will start from A negative. This is x. It will come like this. And the positive will be up to B. Now, when we are moving this line, that is moving this section, I will show you, when we are moving this section, this section is X, when we are moving this section towards A, that means the total intensity will be equal, total positive ordinate, that is summation of the positive ordinate and negative ordinate will be equal to 1. And when we move this ordinate towards A. We are moving this towards A. So when we are taking our section at this part, section at A, our shear force, uh, influence line diagram for the shear force will have the maximum ordinate at A. That is the maximum ordinate is equal to 1. That is, we know the maximum positive ordinate is x minus L by L. Our x is 18. Sorry, our L is 18. X is 0. So, L minus x. 18 minus 0 is 18. Divided by L. Divided by 18, you will get 1. So, maximum ordinate is equal to 1. 18 minus 0 by 18 that will be equal to 1. So this is our influence line diagram for maximum absolute shear force. So for obtaining the maximum absolute shear force, we will place this trailing 80 kilo Newton load at A. So that we will have the maximum absolute positive shear. So by placing the trailing load at A, we will find the other ordinates under the load. So these are the ordinates and the values of the ordinates are obtained by using similar triangle principles. So we are marking the ordinates. Maximum absolute shear force, positive shear force is equal to the magnitude of the loads multiplied by the ordinates, by these ordinates. So we get the absolute maximum shear force as 256.8 kN. Similarly, we are going to find the maximum absolute negative shear force. The same way, for a section, 
our negative our influence line diagram will be negative coordinate positive coordinate then we will have a zero at b now when we are moving this this section that is this section this is x this section towards l when we are moving this section towards b this ordinate becomes 1 this ordinate becomes 1 and it comes like this and this ordinate becomes 0 so our ordinate becomes like this so this is the influence line diagram for absolute negative shear force and the ordinate is equal to 1 because we know the ordinate for negative shear force at a section is x by l here x is equal to l so x by l x by l so x is taken at b x is taken at b so x is equal to l l by l we will get 1 that is why our maximum ordinate at b is equal to 1 now we have to find the position of the loads so the maximum ordinate is at b so we will get the maximum absolute negative shear force when we are placing the leading 100 kilo newton load at b so after placing this 100 kilo newton load at b we will find the what are the ordinates under the load so these will be the ordinates under the load so under this load under this load and under 80 kilo newton load we will find the ordinates so these are the ordinates now using similar triangle principles we will find the value of the ordinates under the so by using similar triangle principles we have found the values as 0.83 0.72 and 0 0.61. 0 0.83, 0.72 and 0.61. Now, absolute maximum negative shear forces, the magnitude of the load multiplied by the ordinate, we get the maximum absolute negative shear forces minus 258.4 kilonewton. Now we will determine the maximum absolute bending moment. So section is not given but we know at some section when any one of the load is placed at the section we will have the maximum bending moment. We don't know the section. See for shear force we know positive shear force maximum positive shear force will be at A and maximum negative shear force will be at B. But for bending moment we don't know. Because the condition for maximum bending moment is y1 is equal to y2. So this cannot be achieved when there are different concentrated loads, number of concentrated loads or when there is a train of loads with a different magnitude. See we have the loads with a different magnitudes, 80 kN, 60 kN, 80 kN and 100 kN. So that taking the average and dividing it in two parts of the section is difficult. So how to find the maximum absolute bending moment? Okay. So the condition for obtaining the maximum absolute bending moment is this. That is, see when we have four loads, we are, di we are finding the resultant of this load. So R is the resultant of the four loads. If it is four, four loads. If it is eight loads, R will be the resultant of all the eight loads. So with respect to some point, we have to determine the resultant. And for this problem, we will determine the resultant with respect to this, this load, this 100 kN load. We will determine the resultant with respect to this 100 kN load. Second, second thing, we need to find small d, this d. That is, at 
after finding this resultant this resultant will be somewhere between the loads now find which load is closer to the resultant r i repeat the resultant r will lie somewhere between the loads and now determine the load which is closer to the resultant so for this case let us assume so w2 or w3 will be closer so if w2 is closer small d is the distance between the resultant and w2 i repeat small d is the distance between the resultant and the load under consideration that is load closer to the resultant now determine d by 2 you divide this d into two equal parts so that we get d by 2 so after obtaining d by 2 find what is l by 2 after obtaining l by 2 so now we got what is r what is d distance between r and the load under consideration d by 2 half of d and l by 2 now the condition is see where the load should be placed where this closer load load closer to the resultant should be placed is at the section that is equal to l by 2 plus d by 2 that will be our x now so at a distance when you take when there is a train of loads moving from a to b when we take a distance sorry when we take a section at a distance equal to l by 2 plus d by 2 and placing the load closer to the resultant at this section you will obtain the maximum absolute bending moment i think it's clear for you so the relationship is cz plus d you can see this is at plus d is at plus d that is nothing but this distance x is at plus d is equal to x that is nothing but l by 2 plus this d by 2 so is at plus d okay i repeat this is at plus this d is equal to x and that is also equal to l by 2 plus this d by 2 okay now our first step is to find what is the resultant so for finding the resultant for finding the resultant so we know resultant will lie somewhere between the loads so somewhere between the loads your resultant may be somewhere here so somewhere at this point we may have the resultant r r now we are taking the moments of all the loads with respect to this load this 100 kilo newton load so with respect to this point we are going to take the resultant so this distance that is distance between this r and this 100 kilo newton load is taken as x is taken as small x so by applying wegener's theorem we have already studied in our engineering mechanics in our first semester that uh, the summation of all the individual moments about a point is equal to the summation is equal to the resultant with respect to that point the summation of all the moments with respect to a point is equal to the moment of the resultant at that point so the moment of the resultant is taken as minus r into x is equal to summation of the moment of all the loads that is this i will highlight A, this 80 kilonewton load 
into the distance 7 2 plus 2 plus 3 7 minus 60 into the distance 2 plus 3 5 minus 80 into distance 3 minus 100 into 0 therefore the distance x is equal to minus 80 into 7 minus 60 into 5 minus 80 into 3 minus 100 into 0 is a 0 divided by the summation of all the loads. So we get the distance x as 3.44 meter. This distance. The distance between the resultant and this 100 kilo newton. This distance as this distance is 3.44 meter. Okay. Now we can see 3.44 meter. So the distance between the resultant and the 100 kilo newton load is 3.44 meter. Now this is the resultant R. So this R, this resultant lies between this 60 kilo newton load and 80 kilo newton load. And which load is closer to R? This is 80 kilo newton load. 80 kilo, this 80 kilo newton load is closer to R. Therefore, 80 kilo newton load should be placed at the section. Now our aim is to find the section. So it is clear, one part is over. 80 kilo newton load should be placed at the section. Now we have to find where is the section. Okay, so we know the section is L by 2 plus d by 2. Section should be placed at a distance of L by 2 plus d by 2. So now we have found, we know already L by 2, we have found d, that is the distance between the resultant and the load closer to the resultant. So our d is 0.44 meter, that is Total distance of the resultant from this 100 kilo newton load is 3.44 meter. And the distance between the resultant, distance between the resultant and the 80 kilo newton load is this distance. is 0.44 meter. 0.44 meter. Now I have just zoomed this part. Listen. I have just zoomed this part in order to make you understand. So R and the load closer. This is R. I will highlight it. So this is the resultant. And this is the load closer to the resultant. So the distance between the resultant and the load closer to the resultant is 0.44 meter. Now we will find D by 2. That is 0.22 meter. D by 2 is 0.22 meter. Now we know L by 2 and D by 2. That is our section X. Okay. So X is L by 2 plus D by 2. It is 9.22 meter. Our section X is at a distance of 9.22 meter from A. Okay. So our this X section is 9.82 meter from A. And by placing this 80 kilo newton load, that is the load closer to the resultant. By placing this 80 kilo newton load at this section, at this section, x is equal to 9.82 meter, we will obtain the maximum absolute bending moment. So we have placed this 80 kilo newton load at the section x is equal to 9.82 meter. Find the other ordinates using similar triangle principles. Multiply the magnitude of the load with the ordinates. We obtain our maximum absolute bending moment as 1063 kN meter. Thank you. Hope you all understood. Thank you.